Hello, my friend, and welcome to this quick session on using ChatGPT to create port scanners. We're going to create a real simple port scanner for both IT and OT. But this is kind of a little preview of one of the, I guess, the bigger quote unquote <laughs> talks that I've been been doing for some of the conferences like the SANS ICS Summit and I'm going to be doing it at the DEF CON ICS Village upcoming in a week or two which I'm really excited about and the whole idea is to see how easy it is to use ChatGPT to create different types of security tools. I am not a developer in any stretch of the imagination and I also at the same time come up with ideas from time to time that it's like, oh, this would be a great tool to have, but it would take me, you know, myself, you know, weeks, months, possibly years to, to put something together like that. Whereas I can use ChatGPT to create it very quickly, or sometimes I might say 30 seconds or, or less, and, and you'll see what I mean. So I have a brand new ChatGPT session set up here. You know, we're just going to tell it what we want. So I'm going to ask it to, let's write a Python script that, let's see, write a Python script that's going to test a remote IP address. All right, we're going to keep it really simple and just test a, a single IP address for now. So test a remote IP address for open ports. On, and we're just going to give it some basic or common IT protocol ports. We're going to give it some kind of common OT protocol ports as well. So for IT, let's just we'll keep it really simple. We're just going to say TCP port 21 for FTP. We'll say 22 for SSH, 23 for Telnet. We'll say 80 for HTTP for websites that are unencrypted and 443 for encrypted websites. So those are going to be our IT ports. Now let's go ahead and we'll add a couple of OT ports as well from the industrial control or control systems or operational technology side. So a couple of the common protocols that, that we have there, we have protocols like, like S7, which is associated with Siemens. So you might have heard the name if you're not familiar with the different types of assets that they create. There's 502 for Modbus, and these are, and I should say, these are the versions of these older OT protocols that run over TCP/IP. Right? They've converted, or they've been, they've been converted over to run on TCP/IP, so we can have them available over Ethernet networks. And then another common one that I see is Ethernet IP which is actually 44818. So that one's way up there in, in the range. So and that's, that's all we're going to say, right? A Python script that's going to te that <laughs> is, how about, is going to test a remote IP address for open ports on TCP 21, 22, 23, blah, 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 and uh, display which ports are open to the screen and this is where i say like 30 seconds or less because it, it didn't take long to type that in and then we sit here and watch as chat gpt comes back with with the script there's a couple of really cool things that it has here right and, and you can start to see it it just finished but if we scroll back up you can see here's our script and i'm actually honestly i've i've probably been doing this on and off for a couple months now and and I've learned a lot actually about development and programming uh, by using ChatGPT. Interestingly enough, as well, I thought ChatGPT every time I had it write something, especially if I was having to, like, if I do this port scanner activity again, that it'll actually write it in a somewhat different way, almost like two different developers wrote it. Uh, so it's really interesting uh, from that fact. So it's never like it never follows the same process. Um, the like the variable names that it comes up with are, are always different, which I find find interesting. But again, it comes back and says, okay, we went ahead and created this port scanner that's going to check for these open ports. Here's the code. Right? I can go ahead and just 
clicky cop click clicky i'm gonna click copy code so i can put in the clipboard for later use and then it even says hey here's how you use the script and here's if you don't know how to run it here's even the instructions on on how to do so so it's really holding your hand through the entire process all right so I'm going to fast forward to where I have a open Explorer window and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste this in to a text file. So we're going to create a text file. We're going to call it scanner.py. As we know, it's going to be a Python script. I'm going to go ahead and open that in Notepad. I'm going to go ahead and paste in our script that ChatGPT wrote for us. We're going to go ahead and save that out. And now I can go ahead and open up a command prompt. And I'm going to go ahead and move to that directory. I remember, oh, I think I just called it port scanner for, for today. You can see all the other scripts I've been playing with that are in the much larger talk. And I'll be uh, putting that on YouTube after, probably after DEF CON. Or at probably about the same time, so about two weeks from now. And so I'm going to go ahead and run it. Now, the really cool thing is if we run it, you can see it's going to ask us for an IP address. We didn't tell ChatGPT to ask the user for an IP address. It just knew, based off of what we were trying to do with the port scanner of testing a remote IP address, that it had to ask us for an IP address. So it went ahead and put that in for us. And we'll, you'll see examples if you start playing with this that ChatGPT is able to you know, uh, make kind of those assumptions, right? It understands what you really are asking for, even though you're not asking for it directly, which is really interesting. But but that's how these LLM works or the you know, Gen I tools work by kind of really predicting and guess, assuming, right, what you're looking for. So anyways, let's give it the IP address of my home Wi-Fi router just as, as a test. And you can see it's going to come back and it's showing us in this case each time it tests one of these ports. And whether it's open or closed. Now, I don't personally need all of the information, but it actually at least is showing me whether it's open or closed. And then you can see, remember we specified to, to report which ports were open. And then, so it's going back and saying, okay, here's the open ports that you have on this particular IP address. If you want to actually see this against an ICS or OTS, I actually have a PLC, a programmable logic controller uh, set up as well. It's not going to be probably as fascinating. You're not going to see as any much, but if we run it, I'm going to go ahead and give it an IP address of 192.168.100.207. This is actually a click PLC. And so the click PLC, you can see, doesn't have any ports open except for that port associated with Modbus running over TCP IP. And so we can see that open at 502. If I see TCP 502 open somewhere in the environment, I'm going to almost always assume that it's going to be a PLC. So here we have a basic port scanner. Now, Nmap exists, right? Nmap's an incredible port scanner that everyone uses. So we're not trying to necessarily recreate the wheel or make a better tool. It's just an exercise to show you right, how you can use ChatGPT to create a tool like a port scanner. If you want, we can even go back and we can change it and let it know, hey, I don't you know, update the previous script not to display each time a port is tested only show me open ports once the testing is complete and so you can just continually go through these iterations to make those little tweaks and changes as you go along so you get it 
to how it looks and feels the way you want to. I've even got it into, like I said, I've, I've mentioned I've actually learned a lot about programming and development, you know, by doing this, which is really interesting. And so sometimes I'll even go in and make the, the little tweak myself now in, in the code, which I, I find actually interesting and funny and scary all, all at the same time. But let's go ahead back and, and let's update that script with the new one and, and we'll see, see what comes up. So let's go back. Let's go ahead and clear the screen. Let's rerun our scanner. So let's go back to that wireless access point because it has the most ports that are open. And now you can see it's not showing us each time it tests the port. It's just going to come back and say, hey, you have ports 21, 22, and 443 open, right? Same thing if we want to go ahead and test our PLC over at 207, completely different network you can see. And when that comes back, we see port 502. Now, another great thing, like if you think of a port scanner like MMAP, is that it can grab the banner and return that information for us. So whether we're you know, doing some type of assessment, a penetration test, or we're trying to look in an environment to see you know, just what type of devices that are out there. Maybe we're trying to do inventory or in an ICS OT environment, we talk about building asset registers. Not that we typically do active scanning using a port scanner in those types of environments, but if you were in a smaller, maybe like a manufacturing environment where uh, you could do active scanning with a port scanner that would introduce safety issues or, or availability issues, so you weren't worried about the scanning bringing the plant down. So as a as a, an extra feature, right? Let's go ahead and just because we we can, right, and really easily, we can go back and let's say update the previous script to grab the available banner from any open port display the banner on the screen. And so we can go ahead and feed that to ChatGPT. ChatGPT says, great, I can do that for you. Here's your script, let it run, right? And then we can run it. The interesting thing too, and this is where I always say, well, it's 30 seconds or less, I guess, yeah, it takes a little bit to type it in and you sit there and watch like for 30 seconds or so for, for ChatGPT to spit out this the script. I actually had Andrew Bachman from Idaho National Labs come up to me after my, my SANS ICS summit talk. And he mentioned, he's like, you realize that you know, ChatGPT, it actually instantaneously has that script. It's just kind of taking this, it, it takes its time to display it to us. So it's almost, we kind of give it like this human quality that it allows us apparently to connect better with with ChatGPT, which is really interesting. I've I've tried ways to get. I'm like, just show me the script. Don't don't <laughs> don't take 30 seconds to display it on the screen. Um, still haven't come up with a, a fix for that one yet. <laughs> so, but let's go ahead. And we'll go ahead and update our script. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and save that out. Let's go back to our command line. Go ahead and clear that out. We'll rerun it. And now let's run it against that Wi-Fi access point to see if anything's different, right? So we can see something's happening. It's testing those ports. And now you can see, oh yeah, we see port 21 is open, 22443 are open as well. And now you can also see when it found that FTP was open on port 21. It pulled the banner so we can see, oh, hey, it is an FTP service. It even actually in that banner advertises its MAC address. It even says, hey, this is the FTP server associated with Microtik 6.44.5, which is great. Like if I'm a pen tester or an attacker, right, I can use that information to look up, are there any vulnerabilities associated with Microtik 6.44.5? We can see a banner a little bit more, a little bit more generically for generic for SSH 
and then it says mm, we weren't able to pull a banner from 443 right so an encrypted website and then we can go back and we could do other testing for that and ask it oh you know this is for a website so maybe just pull back the title from the web page something something like that we won't do it in the video but but you get get the idea i'm not going to run this against the plc because the plc doesn't have a banner to return on that modbus board unfortunately so so there there's nothing to see but again hopefully this gives you a idea of it's not just about creating a portion it's really about using chat gpt to create security tools anything we can think of right and again it was this exercise not to replace nmap to but again to see how you can create different security tools that you can think of and then as you go along you want to make little tweaks you want to add features you want to make changes you can just tell tell chat G, tell chat gpt Right, to be able to make those changes and it'll it'll make those changes for you so hopefully this was helpful hopefully it gives you a little idea maybe some inspiration on some of the things that you can do with chat gpt for creating these tools because i i know there's probably a lot of people out there like me that aren't aren't developers right or I'm not a developer because I just don't have the patience, honestly. <laughs> so it's, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there like me. And you come up with these ideas. You know, maybe some are really great. Maybe some aren't, aren't so great either. <laughs> but but you can use ChatGPT, right, to, to create that idea. Write that tool for you. Test it out. See if there's something there. And... And then take that and, and share it with the, the community. And, and ultimately, we just continue to help other environments become more secure. So hopefully this helps everybody. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Or feel free to reach out and ping me on uh, LinkedIn any time. And I'll leave my contact information. Thanks for checking out the video.